So hey guys. This is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was the rise of the heavenly sage. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Ku, Kurama. Naruto barely yelled out as his friend entailed beast was forcefully ripped out of his body. The young Uzumaki recoiled backwards and began his plummet from a height of 45 meters, feeling the effects of losing his tailed beast. Unfortunately for the son of the fourth Hokage, there wasn't much he could do at the moment, he could feel death beginning to claim him as he was getting weaker by the second his mind was beginning to shut down. And unlike his mother who was a full-blooded Uzumaki and could survive the extraction of Kurama, for at least a little while at least, Naruto was only half Uzumaki and was already leaving this world. Madara stood on the ghetto statue's head, staring on impatiently at Naruto's body as it fell from a great height, all of his plans should now proceed smoothly with that problem child out of the way. If he would have been the same age as Naruto, then Madara would have been defeated for sure, but he was a seasoned veteran and someone Naruto would have no chance of defeating. A disturbing grin spread across Madara's face, now that all the tailed beasts and the chakra construct of the nine tails were in his outer path chains. He then turned his attention to Gara, who was attempting to save Shukaku, which Madara easily knocked him away with his Suzano throwing its chakra blade like a lance at the young K's cage. Madara then proceeded to pull each one of the tailed beasts into the statue's open mouth, and with all nine eyes fully opened it was only a matter of time until ten tails was fully revived. Madara quickly dodged as he was attacked from behind, by an unknown assailant. Setting his single Rinnegan eye on the attacker, it was none other than the murderer of his younger brother. Toborama Senju. How Madara hated this man with every fiber of his being. Quickly expelling a chakra rod from his palm Madara proceeded to pin the reincarnated Hokage to the ground before throwing another chakra rod right through his head. Naruto hit the ground hard, releasing a weak wheezy cough, Naruto managed to glance up at the statue as he watched it began to morph. Gritting his teeth, he wanted nothing more than to get up and try to save the tailed beasts. But it was already too late, he was too weak to barely even move, his eyelids were getting heavy and he could feel the darkness beginning to consume him. With the last bit of consciousness, Naruto muttered out. I, I'm so, sore, Rai ever, Ryon. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he looked around only to find himself within his mindscape, in ankle-deep water. Sitting up quickly Naruto looked back and forth. Kurama. Anyone. Naruto called out but he was greeted by the emptiness of his mind. Did I die? Is this the afterlife? Naruto thought aloud. Why do you assume that you are dead? when you clearly are still alive just barely. Naruto whipped around as he saw an old man floating in front of him, the old man had pale skin and deep wrinkles and a strong jawline. The man had shoulder length, spiky, pale brown hair, with a chin length, braided lock hanging in front of his left ear. He also sported a goatee, which was very long reaching down to his waist. But possibly his weirdest trades were a pair of horn-like protrusions extending from either side of his forehead and a red rinnegan like marking in the center of his forehead. Um, who are you super old man? The man in question didn't respond to Naruto's insult rather he opened his purple rippled eyes. I go by many names young Ashura. But for the sake of time, my name is Hagoromo Otsutsuki and I am better known as the Sage of Six Paths. Oh, you're the guy who created ninjutsu. I remember Pervy Sage and Nagato talking about you. The old man seemed to scowl at Naruto before summoning his dual headed Shikuho. Ninshu, not ninjutsu, the old man spoke in a slightly annoyed tone. I created the ninja creed along with Ninshu for people to connect to one another and understand each other. My firstborn Indra was the one who created ninjutsu, which was made for war, not peace. Naruto was taken back by this information. So why are you here? You said I wasn't dead. Do you know a way for me to get out of here? Naruto asked curiously. Hagoromo stared at the reincarnation of his younger son for a moment. I'm sorry but there is no way you can leave here. You were mere seconds away from dying I managed to stop that for the moment. But I have much to tell you and not a lot of time to do it, so come sit so we may have some words together. Naruto's eyes widened before narrowing. I don't have time to talk, I have to stop Madara before he uses infinite Tsukuyomi. Naruto roared. I'm afraid it's already too late boy. Another voice called out from behind Naruto, it was an aged voice just like Hagoromo's. 
Hagoromo glanced at the intruder. Hamura, what are you doing here in my descendant? Shouldn't you be discussing things with one of your own descendants? Hagoromo said. Turning around Naruto came face to face with another pale-skinned elderly man with long shimmering white hair reaching down to his waist. His bangs were short hung to the left side of his face with a chin-length lock which hung from the right side. He also had small, horn-like protrusions on his forehead. The old man appeared to be very frail, his rib cage was slightly visible, and his brows became more prominent, and he had deep wrinkles in his face. It's already too late for that brother my descendant is already trapped in infinite Tsukuyomi I can't reach her. And the reincarnation of Indra. Sasuke Uchiha is dead, this boy. Naruto Uzumaki the reincarnation of Ashura is the only one left. I had no choice. Hamura said in a cold tone much to Naruto's shock. Wah! What? Sasuke is dead. Infinite Tsukuyomi is active. Was all Naruto could say all the color had drained from his face he failed. Hagoromo glared at his younger brother for his bluntness. Why did you have to go and say that? Because you're too naive and soft elder brother. I'm not going to sugarcoat things for him. He needs to understand that this world is a lost cause now. There's got to be a way to stop the infinite Tsukuyomi. Both brothers glanced at Naruto. There is, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to do it you lack the chakra of Gyuki and Shukaku as well as the Rinnegan. Without either of them, you will not be able to undo the eternal Genjutsu. And I'm not even factoring in Madara who is the Jinchuriki of a complete ten tails. Hagoromo explained. Just how long have I been out for, almost an hour? Hamura explained coldly. Naruto felt like he wanted to die in the corner alone, he failed everyone, he never went back on his word and never broke a promise. Tears began to well up in his eyes as he dropped to his knees before pounding the floor of his mindscape. Why am I so useless? I can't even do anything right. You're not useless Naruto, Madara was simply just too strong for you. Hagoromo explained trying to calm the crying teen down. But this doesn't mean you failed, it was the fate of this planet and this world to fall into infinite Tsukuyomi, a second time. Naruto looked up at Hagoromo with a look of confusion as he wiped the tears from his eyes. The second time? Are you telling me someone else used infinite Tsukuyomi before? Both brothers hesitantly nodded. Yes, Hamura squirmed uncomfortably before answering, our mother Kagaya Otsutsuki. Now boys that's no way to talk about your mother. A powerful feminine voice called out from behind Naruto. Turning around Naruto was met by possibly the most beautiful woman he had ever set his eyes on. She had flawless pale white skin and delicate facial features. Her hair was extremely long, sweeping white and her eyebrows were cut short and round a symbol of nobility and she wore a red shade of lipstick on her lips. She had long black claw-like fingernails, and two brown horns that stuck out from her head and a third eye on her forehead. She wore a high-collared heim kimono which has tomo running down the center and edges of the gown, and it was adorned with intricate gold and purple lines. Hello young Naruto, or should I say reincarnation of Ashura Otsutsuki. My name is Kagaya Otsutsuki, I am one of your ancestors. She said in a soothing tone before crouching before him and wrapping her arms around him pulling him into a warm embrace. Mother how are you here? We sealed you away, Hagoromo asked in a confused but frightened manner. Kagaya glared at her older son. Did you honestly think your seal would hold me forever? The reason why I'm here is to explain to you both what truly happened to me. I assume that the two of you believe I became drunk off my own power and developed a god complex is that correct? Kagaya asked while still holding Naruto in her embrace. Both brothers were taken back by this before glaring at their mother. You put me under your control and had me attack my older brother, and it took him nearly killing me to free me. Then you fused with the Shinju and became the Ten Tails and attacked us trying to take our chakra back. What could you possibly tell us that we already don't know? Hamura growled. I know you were scared of something that still doesn't give you the right to try to kill us. Kagaya sighed. You need to understand something both of you. Hagoromo and you to Hamura. I'm not human at all. I hail from a powerful race of aliens known as celestial beings. Where I come from power is all that matters, any form of sympathy or love is looked down upon. I came to earth as a way to escape my homeworld, my grandfather sent me there to see if the earth was worthy of being harvested. I had no intentions of following through with his orders, I became aware that there was a Shinju tree in this world. 
I intended to harvest it and gain its immense power and declare war against my own kind, however, this world reminds me far too much of my home. So much war, so much pain, so much hatred, so much destruction I couldn't take it, so I used infinite Tsukuyomi to stop everyone. And afterwards I released everyone from the jutsu erasing their memories. Kagaya explained. Naruto glanced up at the rabid goddess. You released everyone from the jutsu could you do that now? Naruto asked hoping that Kagaya would be able to do so. And much to his despair Kagaya shook her head. I'm sorry but I cannot, I hold very little power, right now the will of the Shinju has currently taken over Madara's body. The same way it did to me all those years ago. Kagaya said with regret in her voice before glancing at her sons. Back then Hagoromo, Hamura when you were growing up the will of the Shinju continued to whisper in my ear telling me that you too would betray me. I refused to listen to it but over the years, I began to lose the fight against it. It became too strong for me to handle overpowering me to the point where all I could do was watch as it controlled my body and began trapping the innocent in the infinite Tsukuyomi. I only use the eternal genjutsu to erase the memories of all the humans on earth in order to let them live peacefully without war. That was the beginning of my downfall by using that technique the shinju embedded itself deep in my psyche. The shinju itself has a hive mind it recognized me as a member of the otsutsuki clan however I was nowhere near as strong as my older brother Momoshiki or my father Kinshiki. Kagaya explained. Hive mind? Are you telling me there's more of these shinju trees out there? Hamura asked confused. Kagaya nodded at her younger son before offering him a sad smile. Yes, there are thousands of them throughout the universe, they were once a singular entity known as Shinju the Celestial Goddess of Balance. She was eventually wrongfully convicted of a crime she did not commit, and her very existence was broken up into thousands of fragments becoming Shinju trees throughout the universe. We Otsutsuki harvest these trees and turn them into chakra pills which grant temporary immortality and invincibility. But by draining a Shinju tree of its power will also kill the planet it's anchored to. I didn't want that to happen to this world I came to love this world however, I fell victim to the amount of hatred and rage that the celestial goddess held. It used my body as a medium in order to reclaim that chakra that both you and Hagoromo gained from me. Kagaya said with a regretful look. I'm truly sorry for what I've done to both of you. I only wish I had the same resolve as your descendant Hagoromo. If I had that none of this would have happened, I would probably still be alive to this day watching over this world protecting it. But instead I was taken over and when you sealed me away the will of the Shinju ejected itself from my body in the form of Black Zetsu. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. Kagaya said as a few tears spilled from her eyes. Both brothers looked at each other before glancing back at their mother, however, before they could even say anything Naruto beat them to it. But it's not your fault, you yourself said it you were being controlled you have nothing to be sorry about. Naruto said softly while hugging the woman back. You truly are kind Naruto Uzumaki, I forgive you, mother, Hagoromo said with a small smile, though his smile soon turned into a frown, why didn't you tell us we would have helped you? We could figure out a way to expel it from your body. Kagaya bit her lip. I was afraid to ask you for help. I feared that you would reject me and hate me. And try to seal me away. Kagaya said in a soft tone causing both brothers to feel even more guilty at what they did before. The as elder brother said mother. We would have helped you we wouldn't have pushed you away. We only sealed you away because we thought you were a power hungry monster. I too forgive you for everything mother. Hamura said before walking forward and hugging his mother. Naruto let go of Kagaya and allowed her to hug her son. Hagoromo followed suit and hugged Kagaya as well. Kagaya then turned her attention back to Naruto. Young Naruto Uzumaki there is a way for you to save the world. However, it's not in the way you think. She said slightly cryptically causing Naruto to tilt his head to the side in confusion. What do you mean not in the way I think? Hagoromo and Hamura were both just as confused as Naruto. Mother, what are you talking about? Kagaya sighed. You see by consuming the Shinju fruit, I gained a number of godlike abilities, you have seen some but not all. While it's true I may be missing most of my power I still retain some of it. Enough power to use one last jutsu along with giving you Naruto a gift. Kagaya said before glancing at her son, more specifically Hagoromo. Hagoromo that was your original intention to share your power with both Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha the reincarnations of Ashura and Indra, was it not? Hagoromo nodded. 
Yes, that was my original intentions mother. Then if that's the case I want both you and Hamura to share your power with Naruto, he's going to need it. Especially if he wants to stop this from happening again. And to finally put an end to the will of the Shinju. Hamura's eyes widened as did Hagoromo's, mother you can't be serious. That much chakra would cause him to violently combust. Hamura showed his concern for his brother's descendant. And unlike us, he's completely human he wouldn't be able to withstand that much power. Hagoromo explained. Kagaya smiled. I understand your concern, but Naruto is not normal by any means. He was blessed by death himself the Shinigami had a part in the sealing of Kurama. Even now I can detect the dreadful power of the death god lingering off him. Kagaya said as Naruto flinched at the mention of the death god. I'm plenty strong I'm sure I can handle it, Naruto exclaimed. He really does remind me of my nephew Ashura a little too much, Hamura said with a small chuckle. Hagoromo nodded before turning to his mother again. Mother you said you had a way for young Naruto to undo all this? Kagaya nodded. I intend to send him back in time. That way with the power he will gain from both you and Hamura as well as me he'll be prepared for the Akatsuki and the Otsutsuki. Kagaya explained as everyone looked completely gobsmacked. Seriously. Time travel. Naruto yelped in surprise as the two sons of Kagaya both nodded dumbly unable to believe what they just heard from their mother. Yes, time travel. It's a very odd ability, I've never personally used it myself, so I have no idea how it truly works. But I only intend on sending you four to five years into the past, that should give you more than enough time to prepare. Kagaya said with a serious expression. You've never used it before, and you want to use it on me. Mother I must agree with my brother's descendant, I don't think this is a good idea. We have no idea what kind of repercussions this could cause, for all we know you could send them to a completely different timeline. Hagoromo elaborated. This is the only way we can reverse this, I don't have enough power to undo the infinite Tsukuyomi. And when I give Naruto my power it would take him years just to gain enough control over the Rinne Sharingan to undo the infinite Tsukuyomi. I'm sorry but this is the only way. Kagaya said with a pleading look showing just how sincere she truly was. So, if I go back in time and change things will it change the future here? Naruto said as he was starting to consider this whole time travel thing. He was wondering if it was truly worth the risk. I'm not sure as I've never used this ability before, but I would assume so. Kagaya said not really sure whether changing things in the past would change the future. Hagoromo and Hamura looked at each other, were they? Okay putting the fate of the entire world in the hands of a knucklehead like Naruto. It seemed they didn't have much choice. While they could give their power to their mother there is no guarantee that she would be strong enough to stop the will of the Shinju that had taken over Madara's body. The two sons of Kagaya stepped up beside Naruto Hagoromo grabbing Naruto's left hand while Hamura grabbed Naruto's right hand. Naruto seemed confused before he felt the power rushing through him. Hagoromo's power felt warm but cold at the same time it was taking over his left side. While Himura's power just felt weird as it was taking over his right side. Both his left and right eyes were burning as if someone injected liquid fire into his eyes. Kagaya stepped forward before placing her index finger and middle finger on Naruto's forehead. The influx of power rushing through his body was simply too much for Naruto to take his body felt like it was ripping itself apart. Naruto dropped to his knees before gripping either side of his head and releasing a deep primal roar of pain. Ah. Naruto's entire body was changing his nails were now turning black and lengthening, he was growing horns as well as his hair turned white. His eyes were bleeding tears of blood, his left eye was a rinnegan, with three tomo on each of its two innermost circles. While his right eye was a tensigan, with blue pupils and iris which contain a white, floral pattern. On his forehead was a third eye the Rinne Sharingan which was red in color and contained several concentric circles and nine tomo. Naruto collapsed forward, having lost consciousness due to the immense strain his body just went through. Kagaya then clapped her hands together as she focused the remaining amount of chakra she had. Let's hope this works young Naruto I expect great things from you. Kagaya whispered as Naruto's body was engulfed in a brilliant golden light that resembled dust. Sands of time. The rabbit goddess exclaimed as Naruto vanished along with his mindscape leaving the three Otsutsuki members in the real world as chakra spirits. Hagoromo looked confused as he looked around as did Hamura. Mother, what happened to Naruto? 
The jutsu is finished he's been sent to the past that's the reason why we're in the physical world now because I only had enough power to send him. Which means he'll be alone when he regains consciousness. Kagaya said as her spirit form began to break down before vanishing in wisps of brilliant white chakra. Let's hope Naruto is able to undo this in some way or form, Hamura said before vanishing in a similar fashion to his mother. Hagoromo stayed around for a few seconds longer as he looked saddened at all the people trapped in infinite Tsukuyomi and could only pray that Naruto would be able to act fast enough to reverse this. I'm putting my faith in you Naruto. Please don't let me down, and with that Hagoromo faded away too. So, they sent the Uzumaki brat back in time, did they? Well, it won't matter much even if he does change the past it won't change this future. This world belongs to me as well as this timeline. I will take my time collecting all the remaining shards of my existence. And then I will take back this universe and destroy anyone who gets in my way. A soft feminine voice made itself known as the body of Madara Uchiha walked forward. The sooner I can get out of this decrepit body the better. Shinju spoke softly as she looked up into the night sky, before raising her hand and making a fist. Soon everything will be back to the way it should have been. And I will destroy those who accused me of crimes I did not commit. Naruto had finally arrived. His heart was doing a buck ninety at how close he had been to getting caught, but he still managed to succeed in making it to this place with the sacred scroll of the village. Now, all he had to do was wait for his teacher to arrive so that he could finally become a genin. Glancing back towards the village, the young Uzumaki hummed thoughtfully, he had been able to get away nearly unseen, although he had to resort to cheap but also strangely effective tactics against his Gigi aka Hiruzen Serutobi the third Hokage. But who would have thought that the kind old man the village looked up to for wisdom and guidance was a major pervert? Still, he didn't feel like belittling his good fortune, and it was still early until Mizuki was supposed to arrive. Laying the scroll down in front of him, his blue eyes looked at it with curiosity. What was so important about this particular scroll anyways? Allowing his curiosity to get the better of him, he opened it to take a peek. The first thing he saw was a jutsu. A technique that shinobi were able to use. It was a clone technique, and he couldn't help but pout as he felt like pulling out his hair. After all, it was a clone technique that caused him to fail, which is why he was taking this makeup test. But he gave it a closer look. Unlike the one taught in the academy, this clone technique made solid clones and required a great deal of chakra. The energy that Shinobi used in everyone had within them. But it was also a life force one could not live without it. It amazed him that it only required a single hand seal, which was the form of crossed fingers in an addition symbol. Deciding to give it a try, he copied the illustration of the hand seal and concentrated, bringing forth his immense chakra and whispered, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto kept his eyes closed as he heard a popping sound. He had little hope that it would work. Which was why he had also whispered instead of declaring the jutsu. Cracking a single eye open, he took note of a perfect copy of himself sitting across from him. Opening both of his eyes fully as he observed his copy's appearance. From the feet up, he saw blue ninja sandals, orange pants that were quite large and held together by a black belt, an equally orange shirt with blue on the shoulders and a thick white collar, and the swirled tassel that old man Hokage had given to him when he first started the academy. On the copy's face, he saw his whisker birth markings, bright blue eyes with a hint of violet in them, and his sunny blonde hair that spiked erratically. The copy was perfect, right down to the smudge mark he had earned earlier that day on his chin. I can't believe it, he gasped, it actually worked? Yup looks like it, boss, the clone replied while grabbing the original to prove that it was solid. That was very easy. But why did this clone technique work so easily? but I can't perform the academy one. The clone simply shrugged. I don't have the slightest clue. Naruto was about to continue speaking to his clone, but suddenly both Naruto and his clone felt a weird sensation. Naruto felt a surge of power rushing through him, but it became quickly overwhelming as he dropped to his knees clenching his chest. He couldn't breathe, the power was so overwhelming that it felt like it was crushing everything in his body. His clone, on the other hand, could only watch in horror as his original began to scream in agony as his body was engulfed in a bright white light that quickly expanded covering the area around them. Every able-bodied shinobi in Konoha, stopped in their tracks as they glanced out towards the forest of death. A large bright white light was shining from there, one shinobi, in particular, was worried. 
Haruka the only academy teacher who took the time to get to know Naruto couldn't suppress the feeling of dread building up in his stomach. Naruto what in the almighty log's name are you doing? The scarred shunin thought to himself before making a beeline towards the forest of death. Up in the Hokage mansion, Hiruzen was staring out the window in his office as he watched the bright light, beginning to dimmer bit by bit until it completely vanished. I don't like the looks of this, something is blocking my crystal ball. And this feeling, it feels like chakra but different much purer and more primal. Hiruzen thought to himself. The clone of Naruto was finally able to move his hands away from his face as the blinding light was gone. However, his jaw dropped down to the ground at what he saw in the place of his original. He saw a tall handsome man, with snow white hair, paper white skin, horns, clawed hands and was wearing a strange robe with weird symbols that resembled the number 9 or 6. The clone nervously inched towards the stranger lying unconscious on the ground. Pulling out a kanai, in case he had to defend himself. However, the clone quickly yelped as he jumped back as the stranger's eyes flickered open revealing to strange looking eyes, but it only got creepier and weirder as the slit on the man's forehead opened revealing a third eye. Man, what the hell happened? Naruto grumbled as he forced himself into a sitting position, he then glanced out of the corner of his eye and noticed a younger version of himself standing there looking scared. Um. Little me what happened here? Naruto asked nonchalantly not even taking the time to consider how strange his words sounded. The clone narrowed his eyes as he gripped his kanai even tighter. You killed my original. That's what the hell happened here. Dad Bayo. The clone yelled as he charged forward attempting to strike the older Naruto. Naruto effortlessly caught the clone's wrist, without even thinking his body simply reacted. Dad Bayo. Original. Does that mean? Oh no. Naruto thought to himself as he connected the dots. When he came back in time, the version of him must have been erased or swapped out with him. Because two of the same being cannot exist in a universe together without causing a paradox. Naruto froze when had he become this smart, his vocabulary was very limited before receiving this power from Hagoromo, Hamura, and Kagaya. Naruto stared at the clone of his counterpart as he released a sad sigh. I'm sorry about what happened. But, it was a necessary sacrifice in order to prevent the hellish future that awaits this world. Naruto said with a calm expression. What the hell is wrong with me I was never this cold or harsh before. Naruto couldn't believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. Unfortunately, it's true Naruto your counterpart sacrifice was needed for this to happen. I wish there was another way but there wasn't I hope you can find it in yourself to forgive me. Kaguya's voice echoed throughout Naruto's mind. Kagaya is that you? Naruto replied. Hi, Kagaya retorted softly. We will talk later right now you need to assume the form of your counterpart before anyone suspects anything. The massive influx of power you have released by entering this world is most likely notified not only the current Hokage but most likely the other four cage as well. You're going to have to perform the infinite Tsukuyomi to erase your resurgent into this world. I'll teach you how to use it, just don't use it for anything bad. Kagaya explained as Naruto mentally nodded. My original sacrifice was necessary. How dare you say that he had yet to achieve his dream of becoming. The clone was unable to finish his words as he was dispelled, due to Naruto crushing the clone's arm. Naruto glanced up at the moon. So Kagaya how do I use infinite Tsukuyomi? Naruto asked as he couldn't believe that he was going to use this dreadful technique. You must fly up into the upper atmosphere and channel your chakra into your third eye and whatever you desire it will accomplish. The infinite Tsukuyomi is not a normal genjutsu by any means, it has the power to change the world as you know it. It works like, Tsukuyomi, Koto Amatsukami, Izanagi, Izanami, and creation of all things. Working simultaneously with one another. One might call this ability reality warping. All you must do is think of whatever you desire, and it will accomplish that, Madara well rather the Shinju only wanted to use it to reclaim her chakra by trapping everyone in an infinite genjutsu. That is only a minor use of this almighty genjutsu. Kagaya explained leaving Naruto completely gobsmacked by the power of infinite Tsukuyomi. Anything I want huh? Naruto muttered to himself before shakingly lifting off the ground as he flew high into the air as the moon began to become bigger and bigger to him. It wasn't long before he was up in the upper atmosphere, as he channeled chakra into his third eye. I wish to erase everyone's memories of me arriving in this world. I want everyone to believe that I am this world's version of me. Naruto thought as the moon reflected the Rinne Sharingan. 
In a matter of seconds, the moon began to glow brightly, as its heavenly light shined down on the world, completely wiping the minds of all sentient beings on the world. Naruto could only look down in sadness as he still couldn't believe he used this dreadful technique, he slowly descended to the ground while the light of infinite Tsukuyomi still shined. As the light faded Naruto noticed that his form began to change as he took on the appearance of the clone he had met earlier. It worked. Naruto said softly as he walked over and grabbed the scroll of sealing and proceeded to wait for both his sensei Iruka and Mizuki to arrive. Naruto was leaning up against a large tree with the scroll of sealing in his lap. When a shadow loomed over him, it was an angry looking Iruka. Gotcha. Naruto looked up and going off memory, he gave his former teacher a foxy grin. But on the inside, he was tearing up he wanted nothing more than to hug his former sensei. About time, nosebleed, I found you. Uruka did his famous, big head jutsu. No, you fool. I found you, Uruka said while glaring at Naruto. Hey, I guess you have got me. Too bad you were so fast. I've only memorized one jutsu, Naruto said. Uruka took note that Naruto looked, somewhat beat up and tired looking. You look exhausted. What have you been doing out here? Wait till I show you. I never dreamed that some of the shinobi arts are so amazing. If I master these jutsu, you'll have to let me graduate. Naruto recited everything he could remember from this fateful day. Uruka could only stare at Naruto sympathetically. So, you came here to practice your ninjutsu? Working yourself to exhaustion? The academy instructor thought to himself. Naruto, yeah? Uruka gained a serious expression. There was no way Naruto could have known about any of this. What's up with the scroll you're carrying? Naruto glanced behind him at the scroll leaning up against the tree as he walked over and picked it up. Oh, you mean this? Naruto said as he gained a somewhat sad look it was only there for a split second, and thankfully Uruka didn't take notice of it. Mizuki sensei told me about it, and this place. He said if I could show you, I learned a single jutsu from the scroll. You'd let me become a shinobi. Naruto said with a big foxy grin. Uruka gained a look of horror on his face as a single bead of sweat traveled down his cheek. Mizuki. Was all Uruka could think as his lightning fast reflexes took over as he knocked Naruto out of the way. He was then hit by a barrage of kanai. Mizuki crouched up in the tree as he yelled down to the wounded Uruka. I'm impressed that you figured out where to go. Mizuki praised his fellow academy teacher. Now I understand. Uruka gasped in pain. Mizuki glared down at Naruto. The scroll Naruto give it to me, he said coldly. Don't let him have it, Naruto. Protect that scroll with your life. Uruka yelled as he ripped a kanai out of his body. Mizuki smirked sinisterly. It's more dangerous than you can imagine. It holds the most forbidden and dangerous ninja arts. While the outside Naruto appeared confused but, on the inside, he was grinning like a villain. All the techniques he had acquired from Hamura, Hagoromo and Kagaya made the scroll of sealing look like a bunch of D-rank jutsu. Mizuki used you because he wants it for himself. Mizuki chuckled to himself. Naruto, even if you've read it, it will still be meaningless. I can show you what it means. Uruka's expression turned into a look of horror. Shish. Shut up, you fool. Mizuki ignored the injured Uruka. You know what really happened. During the Nine Tails attack 12 years ago, where the fourth Hokage gave up his life to kill the Nine Tails? You see, in order to avoid mass hysteria and riots, the third Hokage had to seal up this information as he made a law, forcing everyone to remain quiet and not to tell you anything about what happened that night. Mizuki continued with a look of glee while Naruto remained quiet and stoic. Stop! Uruka cried. You see, Naruto. The fourth Hokage didn't kill the Nine Tails rather he sealed it away. And when I mean sealed, I mean he sealed it inside of you. You are the Nine-Tailed Fox and you're also responsible for the murder of Aruka's family. Mizuki focused his gaze on Naruto still grinning waiting for the young blonde to break and start crying. But what Naruto said next not only threw him but Aruka through a loop. Is that all? I'm aware of the Nine Tails' existence I've known him for years and we're actually good friends. I knew for a fact you were using me just to get the scroll that's why I went along with it so I could expose you. Naruto said coldly. But for me to pull this off I had to play the class clown. It's true I can't use the academy's clone jutsu due to how much chakra I have. But that doesn't matter, it's time to put you down for good. 
Mizuki stared at Naruto for a moment before he burst into a fit of laughter. Uruka, on the other hand, could only stare at Naruto with a look of disbelief. He's been fooling us the entire time he could have passed ages ago. But he didn't, why then? Uruka pondered for a second before Mizuki began to talk again. You're going to fight me. Don't make me laugh you're not even a gen in nine tails. Mizuki cackled madly while Naruto simply chuckled. If I was really the nine-tailed fox, I would be leagues above the third Hokage, and I would be able to wipe out anyone in the village without any effort whatsoever. Plus, if I were the nine tails, I would have left a long time ago I wouldn't stay in the village. Naruto said remembering what had learned about Kurama. Shut up you stupid fox, Mizuki yelled as Naruto grinned madly. But I will show you the new jutsu I learned, Naruto said with a grin as he made a cross-hand seal as he began to focus his chakra. Shadow Clone Jutsu Over a thousand replicas of Naruto appeared around the original. Mizuki gained a look of horror, while Uruka could only stare on with a look of pure awe. I believe this piece of trash needs to be taken out. Get him boys! Naruto ordered as his clones proceeded to beat the shit out of Mizuki. Uruka could only stare at Naruto after he dispelled his clones leaving the mutilated and beaten body of Mizuki laying on the ground. Naruto turned his attention to his wounded sensei as Naruto placed his hand on Uruka. Naruto what are you? Uruka's voice died in his throat as he felt his wounds healing as all the remaining kanai were forced out of his body. Naruto pulled his hand back as he smiled at Uruka before hugging him tightly startling the academy teacher. Naruto how did you do that? Uruka asked as Naruto was about to talk when suddenly, two Anbu Owl and Tiger jumped down beside Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto, come with me, Owl said. Without giving Naruto any time to speak, he grabbed the blonde's shoulder and picked the forbidden scroll up. He disappeared with them in a puff of smoke. The other Anbu tiger grabbed Uruka and signaled for the other Anbu in the area to pick up the traitor before disappearing in the same manner the previous Anbu had done. Around 15 seconds later, Naruto was in the Hokage's office with Anbu Owl, while Uruka was taken to the hospital. Hiruzen took the scroll from Owl and set it down next to his chair. Thank you, Owl. You may leave now, he said. The Anbu agent bowed down slightly before disappearing via the body flicker jutsu. Naruto, are you okay? Hiruzen asked with concern in his voice. Now Naruto had a split second decision to make, would he greet Hiruzen in a friendly manner or would he fake his emotions? because truth be told Naruto was somewhat resentful towards Hiruzen for hiding the information about his parents from him as well as Kurama. I'm fine, Gigi. Naruto replied, deciding to greet his surrogate grandfather in a friendly manner. So how long have you known about your burden, and why didn't you tell me before? Hiruzen said filled with guilt about lying to the son of his successor. Naruto's once friendly expression turned sour. We met a little while back, and we argued back and forth for a little while before we eventually became friends. He also told me about my parents, Naruto said while glaring at the old man in front of him whose eyes widened. And the reason why I didn't tell you was because, if you weren't going to tell me the truth then I wouldn't tell you either. But I hold no grudges against you Gigi. You made a judgment call, a poor one, but you were doing what you believed was best at the time, Naruto explained. Hiruzen gained a grateful expression. It warms my heart that you were able to forgive this old fool for making so many mistakes. Hiruzen breathed a sigh of relief. Hiruzen's grateful expression turned serious. I'm curious Naruto what are you going to do now, that you have this knowledge in hand? Naruto stared at his surrogate grandfather before he sighed softly, his current mission to reverse the damage done to his world took precedence over his dream of becoming Hokage. Gigi. The days of me trying to gain the approval of not only the villagers but my fellow shinobi are over. I will not become Hokage. To people who won't take the time to get to know me. Instead, I'll become the strongest there ever was and I'll make them see the error of their ways. Naruto said calmly which began to creep Hiruzen out slightly. So, this is what Naruto is really like underneath that mask. It's a bit unsettling to see just how mature, calm and sharp he is. Hiruzen thought to himself. Well if that's the case, it saddens me that you will not become my successor. But I will respect your wishes. I believe it's time for you to go home and rest for tonight since you had quite the day. We can discuss your new living arrangements tomorrow. Naruto allowed a bittersweet smile to grace his face. 
You have no idea how hectic my day has been Gigi. Naruto thought to himself bitterly. Thank you, Gigi I'll see you tomorrow. Naruto said as he got up and walked out of the Hokage's office. I can't believe that's actually my godson. A masculine voice called out from the windowsill behind Hiruzen. It saddens me greatly to say this but yes that is your godson, Jiraiya-kun. And the fact that he took in all the information so well is startling to me. Hiruzen explained with a frown. You think he's hiding something from us? Jiraiya asked his former sensei who simply shook his head. Even if he is, I'm not going to pry on his privacy. But if the need arises, I will ask him even if I have to use force. Hiruzen explained, getting the sneaking suspicion that Naruto could possibly not be telling him everything. Jiraiya gave a sigh. I'll trust you on this one Gigi. I'll see you in another six months because I have a feeling Orochimaru may be planning something. Jiraiya explained as Hiruzen rubbed the bridge of his nose. He simply couldn't get a break could he if it wasn't one thing it was another. Naruto arrived at his crummy apartment, while he wasn't a fan of this place it was still home. Stripping down to a t-shirt and boxer shorts Naruto climbed into his bed before going to sleep. However, before sleep could fully take him, he felt the pull on his consciousness. Naruto found himself in a white void as he saw Kagaya standing before him. Naruto simply stared at the mother of the Sage of Six Paths, as she seemed to be staring at him with a mixture of amusement and seriousness. While I'll admit your current form is quite adorable, we have more pressing matters to discuss. As you can tell you've been fully brought back to the past without a hitch with the exception of your counterpart being extinguished. Kagaya explained as Naruto couldn't help but frown. I can't help but feel like I'm a murderer for taking over his body, and the anger I saw in his clone. Naruto didn't finish his sentence as he clenched his fists tightly. You had something you wanted to tell me, what is it? And how are you even here? Naruto asked curiously. I'll start with the latter of the two. Kagaya explained before running her fingers through her long silky hair. I implanted a small portion of my chakra into you as a message for you when you arrive in whatever timeline you were sent to. You do understand how this works right? After all your parents did the same exact thing in order to help you gain control over Kurama's chakra. Kagaya explained as Naruto nodded remembering the meeting with both of his parents. His father when he fought against pain, and his mother when he was trying to gain control over Kurama's power. Now back on to the more important subject. I was able to send you back in time however, here's where it gets tricky. I'm not entirely sure if this is your original past or a completely different timeline. While I'm pretty sure you most likely couldn't change the future if you simply kill all the Akatsuki members now. Kagaya explained as Naruto frowned at this. So, what you're saying is even if I were to hunt down and destroy, both the Akatsuki and Orochimaru it wouldn't change a thing in the future I'm from. Naruto said calmly while Kagaya sadly nodded. If I can't change my future, I'll change this world's future instead. I guess that's the best I can do. Naruto said bitterly, he should have expected this. Why am I so calm, and my intelligence has gone through the roof? Kagaya tilted her head to the side. When you took in not only my power but the power of both my sons, you just didn't gain our chakra you gained our intelligence and vast library of jutsu and techniques as well. Well. I guess that makes sense, so what should I do now? Naruto asked. Kagaya didn't respond at first, she simply stared at Naruto for a moment before replying. I suggest you tread carefully, for now, do not use your true form unless absolutely necessary. While you could defeat pretty much almost anyone in the world with little to no effort at all. And you don't know the differences in between this world and your previous one either. Kagaya said as her body began to become translucent as it began to break down. I guess this is it. Thank you for everything you've done for me Kagaya Otsutsuki, I'll never forget you and the kindness you've done for me. Naruto said with a smile as Kagaya smiled at him too, before quickly making her way over to him and hugging him one last time, as she gave him a small kiss on the cheek. Do what you think is best Naruto and one last thing you are now my third child Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki. You are now half human half celestial being or alien. Live well, my son. Ya yeah, nay. Kagaya said as she faded from existence as the white void Naruto was in, then changed to what seemed to be a sewer. There were pipes in every wall and the floor was filled with water that was around ankle deep. The surrounding area looked very familiar to him, he was both excited and nervous to meet the Kurama of this world. Hopefully, 
This version of Kurama will be more willing to listen and cooperate with him rather than his version. He wandered through endless corridors until he came to a long dark hallway and walked down it. Naruto came to a large room with a giant cage, that had long thick vertical bars. The middle of the cage had a small piece of paper with the kanji for, seal. Well well, look who it is, I must say you're a vast improvement to my original host but let me make something perfectly clear human. I have no intention of helping you in any way, your kind is nothing but a plague to this world. And I'll stop at nothing to rid this world of your kind. The fox growled from within the cage it was locked in as its large predatory red eyes stared at Naruto. And yet Naruto did not move, nor did he seem to register with the fox said. Oi, are you even listening to me? Kurama, what was that? The fox didn't get an answer as Naruto began to walk towards the cage, his walk turned into a sprint as he ran through the bars and jumped, latching himself onto the fox's hand, paw. This startled the tailed beast as it began to freak out at the sudden contact. Oh! Let go of me, how dare you touch me you vile cockroach! Why did you? The fox heard Naruto mumbling into its fur as it narrowed its eyes. What did you say? I can't hear you, human, speak up! Naruto lifted his face from the fur, as tears freely flowed out of his eyes streaming down his face. The fox was taken back by this. Why Kurama? Why did you have to be sealed away by Madara? It's not fair you're my one true friend, you are even more of a friend than Sasuke ever was. You are the only one who truly knew me. Naruto said trying to keep his emotions in check knowing that the Kurama he was speaking to wasn't the one originally sealed in him, but it didn't matter to him right now, upon seeing this world's Kurama he couldn't hold it in any longer and all his emotions came rushing to the surface. The fox frowned for a moment, staring at the counterpart to its original host latched onto its paw. That's right my counterpart was sealed away into the ghetto Mazo. What should I do? Ma, I was never good with feelings and emotions that's Matabi-chan and Kakuo-chan's thing. And haha ha you was pretty good with helping people, but I really wasn't good at it at all. Kurama pondered. Oikit. Naruto slowly glanced up looking into Kurama's big red eyes, that didn't seem to be filled with as much hatred as they were a few moments ago. They seemed to be filled with confusion, concern and a tad bit of curiosity. What is it Kurama? Naruto asked wiping the tears from his eyes. I don't remember giving you permission to use my name. The strongest current tailed beast growled as Naruto frowned at this. And what do you expect me to call you? Call you by your title? Naruto asked as the fox nodded. Naruto's frown only deepened. I'm not going to call you by your title that will be disrespectful. Plus, your name sounds a lot better than Nine Tails. It's not disrespectful you brat. The fox bellowed as Naruto was forced off Kurama's hand. Pa. You have no right to use my name so casually. I am Kurama, the princess of Makai and leader of the tailed beasts. This threw Naruto through a loop. The Kurama of his world was a genderless massive chakra given consciousness. And yet this version of Kurama claimed to be not only a princess of some unknown realm called Makai but claimed to be the leader of the tailed beasts too. Princess? You're telling me you're female? Naruto said with a bewildered expression on his face. Do you have a problem with me being female boy? Kurama hissed showing her distaste towards Naruto and possibly male humans in general. But something was bothering Naruto he felt no chakra from Kurama at all, instead, he felt a darker denser power that was making him feel ill just by being close to her. Your power what is it? It's making me feel sick. The foxy woman gave a dark smirk. That would be my Yuki. She giggled darkly. It has quite the effect on you humans, it's downright poisonous and in high amounts could easily kill a cage level shinobi. However, the sage of six paths was the only human I'm aware of who was unaffected by Yuki. Kurama said with glee as her eyes took a more predatory look, as she was staring at Naruto as if he was a piece of meat. Naruto frowned as he stood up before taking a deep breath as his body was engulfed in a bright light forcing Kurama to cover her eyes. And when the light was gone Naruto had taken his true form, the form of Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki with his Rinnegan, Tensigen, and Rinne Sharingan active. What trickery is this? Kurama all but yelled as Naruto stared at her indifferently before he blurred out of existence before appearing directly in front of her causing the Kitsune woman to yelp in surprise. Let me reintroduce myself Kuramaheim. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki. 
brother of Hagoromo Otsutsuki the sage of six paths and Hamura Otsutsuki the white-eyed god and third son of Kagaya Otsutsuki the rabbit goddess. I've come from another timeline as you are aware of, but I don't think you have seen this part of my memories, how I obtained this power. So, allow me to enlighten you, I need information on this world and you most likely want to get out of here in my correct? Naruto asked as Kurama nodded nervously as Naruto's chakra was crushing her. But something was bothering Naruto he felt no chakra from Kurama at all, instead he felt a darker denser power that was making him feel ill just by being close to her. Your power what is it? It's making me feel sick. The foxy woman gave a dark smirk. That would be my Yuki. She giggled darkly. It has quite the effect on you humans, it's downright poisonous and in high amounts could easily kill a cage level shinobi. However, the sage of six paths was the only human I'm aware of who was unaffected by Yuki. Kurama said with glee as her eyes took a more predatory look, as she was staring at Naruto as if he was a piece of meat. Naruto frowned as he stood up before taking a deep breath as his body was engulfed in a bright light forcing Kurama to cover her eyes. And when the light was gone Naruto had taken his true form, the form of Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki with his Rinnegan, Tensigen and Rinne Sharingan active. What trickery is this? Kurama all but yelled as Naruto stared at her indifferently before he blurred out of existence before appearing directly in front of her causing the Kitsune woman to yelp in surprise. Let me reintroduce myself Kuramaheim. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki. Brother of Hagoromo Otsutsuki the sage of six paths and Hamura Otsutsuki the white-eyed god and third son of Kagaya Otsutsuki the rabid goddess. I'm also a half-human half-celestial being hybrid. I've come from another timeline as you are aware of, but I don't think you've seen this part of my memories, how I obtained this power. So, allow me to enlighten you, I need information on this world and you most likely want to get out of here in my correct. Naruto asked as Kurama nodded nervously as Naruto's chakra was crushing her. The sickly feeling Naruto felt earlier was no longer there, it was most likely due to his sealed form. It was created by the infinite Tsukuyomi to make everyone believe that he was this world's version of himself. But when he took his true form, his chakra was almost on a different plane of existence altogether. He noticed that Kurama was no longer staring at him with disgust or as if he was a piece of meat, rather she was staring at him with a look of pure fear. Kurama couldn't control her body, it was unconsciously shaking. His chakra, it's so massive. I've never felt a level of chakra this high. Even Haha Yu doesn't possess this much chakra and she's the ten-tailed wolf and queen of all Makai. Kurama thought to herself as it would be best not to make enemies with this man in front of her. Naruto could clearly sense Kurama's fear towards him and his overwhelming power, with a bit of concentration Naruto was able to suppress his chakra to a level that Kurama could endure. After noticing that her shivering had subsided Naruto cleared his throat before asking a question. I would like to know what's the difference in between the tailed beasts in my world and the tailed beasts of this world are? Naruto asked. Kurama stared at Naruto for a moment before she finally answered him. Well the difference is obvious, isn't it? We are flesh and blood creatures, while those fakes in your world were nothing more than chakra given consciousness. She spoke in a matter of fact tone as if Naruto was supposed to know that. Naruto frowned at this. That's not what I meant Kurama. What I meant is how did they come to be in this world, like the tailed beasts of my world were born from the division of the ten tails chakra. That was done by Hagoromo Otsutsuki the sage of six paths, after splitting the chakra he hurled the body of the beast up into the sky creating the moon. Naruto explained as Kurama frowned she didn't know that bit of information. Something like that shouldn't be possible, the only thing that proves is that the sage was stronger in Naruto's world rather than in hers. Kurama let out a sigh knowing that there was no way around this. Okay, first things first just like in your world we had a Shinju tree. However, no one knows where it came from, some say it came out of a tear in the sky while others say it was just here since the beginning of time. But that doesn't matter, what matters is that two beings fed from the Shinju tree before it came to life becoming the monstrosity you know as Ten Tails. The first being was my mother and the queen of all Makai and Yukai. Yukihana, she started out as a normal wolf that fed upon the first chakra fruit several millennia ago. By consuming the fruit, she turned from an average wolf into a ten-tailed wolf and she was the first being to ever wield chakra and over the years she developed another power Yuki. The second person was Hagoromo Uzumaki the sage of six paths. He was the first human to ever wield chakra, 
Kurama explained. Naruto frowned at this information. A tear in the sky? Perhaps one of the celestial goddess's fragments didn't just exist in my universe perhaps it traveled across time itself as well. Naruto thought to himself as he heard Kurama clearing her throat glancing at her he noticed she was glaring at him. Naruto then gestured for her to continue as she huffed in annoyance but complied. As I was saying before I was ignored. After Hagoromo had consumed his chakra fruit which was nearly a millennia after my mother consumed hers and had established the realm of Makai. He gained mastery over his chakra however unlike my mother he did not develop Yuki or any secondary abilities. Instead, he sought out the toad sage Gamamaru, the not so great toad sage in order to learn Senjutsu. However, at this time the Shinju tree came to life angered that its power had been stolen not once but twice. However, this monstrosity could not enter the realm of Makai so instead, it went after Hagoromo. And as you know Hagoromo won that battle and did strip the monstrosity of its power but here's where it differs from your timeline. Kurama paused for a moment making sure that Naruto was paying attention to her this time. Naruto was listening intently to Kurama's words, as he gestured for her to continue which she did begrudgingly. My mother approached Hagoromo and asked if she could use the chakra of ten tails to produce offspring. Hagoromo agreed as well as helped in the process, and nine months later we were born into this world. And by that time Hagoromo had already shared his chakra with most of humanity attempting to establish world peace. But as you know humans weaponized chakra and used it to wage war against one another. It saddened Hagoromo greatly and he died shortly after the birth of his two children Indra Uchiha and Ashura Senju. You're probably wondering why they both have different last names. You see he had two lovers and they both died in childbirth. Kurama finished as Naruto was absorbing this information. That certainly is much different from my timeline. So, you were born through natural childbirth. Naruto said as Kurama nodded. Then something piqued his curiosity as a new question formed. How come I can't sense any chakra coming from you? You were obviously born with it weren't you? Naruto asked as Kurama scowled at the question. That thing you call a father Minato Namikaze summoned the Shinigami. And used the death god to strip me of my chakra and then sealed it within your brother and sister. And under normal circumstances, one would lose their soul right after summoning the Shinigami, and yet he didn't, and I don't know how he managed that even to this day. Kurama hissed as she glanced at Naruto before her frown turned into a look of fright. Naruto's bangs shadowed his eyes as he gritted his teeth in anger, flaring his divine level of chakra. I have a brother and sister, and my father's alive. Naruto growled softly if he was still his idiotic self, he might have been a little bit excited and a bit hurt. But that Naruto is long gone. Why would he do that? Is my mother still alive? Naruto asked as he glanced at Kurama who slowly nodded as Naruto's chakra and killer intent began to rise to an even higher level causing Kurama to drop to her hands and knees as she was gasping for breath. Naruto then took notice of Kurama before suppressing his chakra again. They most likely left you here so the rest of the elemental nations would believe that Konoha still possessed a Jinchuriki. Kurama said trying not to anger Naruto again. Naruto bit his lip as he began to draw blood as he dropped to his knees before slamming his fists down to the floor of his mindscape. What the fuck? Naruto roared as he startled Kurama. It's not fair. I had no parents growing up and now I find out they're alive in this timeline and yet they left my counterpart to die. Naruto continued to rant as tears slowly spilled out of his eyes. Kurama for her part unconsciously made her way towards Naruto before gently wrapping her arms around him. She had no idea why she was doing this, it just felt like the right thing to do to comfort someone when they were in pain like this. Naruto slowly snaked his arms around Kurama as she seemed to twitch at the contact but didn't make any effort to stop him either. I really am getting too soft, but he is different from most humans at least. Kurama thought to herself as she gently rubbed his back. Kurama. Naruto said softly getting the crimson-haired vixen's attention. Why, yes Ki, Naruto. Kurama said almost calling Naruto kid in the process. Once I get new living arrangements from Hiruzen, I'm going to let you out of the seal, all I ask is please don't leave me. Naruto said as Kurama's eyes widened at the request, her surprise was quickly replaced by anger. She didn't want to spend another moment in this decaying realm the human world. However, before she could muster a retort Naruto began to speak again. I know you probably don't want to do this, and I won't force you to. 
I just lost so much in such a short period of time. I know you're not the Kurama from my world, I just don't think I can stand being alone. Naruto said. Kurama's anger slowly began to melt away, it was replaced by sympathy. However, the last time she got close to a human it nearly got her raped and that was something that she would not allow to happen again. I can't. She began as she spoke softly. The last time. I got close to a human he nearly raped me. He was able to use an ancient tag, more specifically a sage tag which he used to temporarily paralyze me. If it wasn't for my brother Yuki I would have been raped that day. Kurama said as her voice cracked with emotion. Naruto felt anger building up within him. Now it all made sense that was probably one of the main reasons why she hated humans so much other than the fact that humans used her and her siblings as a source of power. I see. Well, it can't be helped. I'm still going to free you regardless. And I'll even give you some of my chakra to restore your depleted reserves. Naruto said trying not to show his disappointment and sadness. Naruto didn't answer as he was deep in thought, could he really do that just abandon everyone? When he really thought about it how much did he know about everyone in Konoha? With the exception of Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura, Uruka, and Konohamaru he barely knew anything about any of his other friends. Hell, he knew more about Killer B than everyone else. And let's not get started on his godfather Jiraiya a man who was supposedly supposed to raise him but didn't. While Naruto knew about him being the spymaster for Konoha, the least he could have done was at least visit him once or twice. Naruto's Rinnegan and Tensigen both stared into Kurama's blood-red orbs. Naruto had to choose in between his mission or simply run away from it. This was a rather tough decision, perhaps he could leave an enhanced shadow clone here and just go to Makai for a while at least until the Chunin exams. I guess it couldn't hurt to go with you, it would give me a chance to unwind a little bit. Naruto said as Kurama allowed a small smile to appear on her rosy red lips. Then it's settled we'll head to Makai tomorrow after you get proper living arrangements from the old monkey Hiruzen. So, leave your mindscape for now and get whatever rest you can, because you're going to need it for tomorrow. Especially if you're going to meet my mother. She can be quite a handful. Kurama said refusing to meet Naruto's gaze as a light blush appeared on her cheeks just thinking about her mother and how she acted towards any attractive young man brought before her. Naruto gave Kurama a small smile as he stood up before waving goodbye to her. As he walked out through the bars of the cage Naruto turned around and looked at the seal tag. Using his unconscious mastery of flight Naruto flew up to the tag as he gripped it tightly, and just as he was about to pull it off, he felt a hand gripped his wrist. Glancing out of the corner of his eye he noticed it was the hand of his father Minato Namikaze. Who are you and where is Naruto? What are you talking about I am Naruto, father. Naruto hissed out as Minato was taken back by this information and before he could even speak another voice made itself known. Minato Namikaze. Come here so I can rip you apart you wretched mortal. Kurama roared with anger, as she completely forgot to assume her giant fox form. Minato turned his head as he glanced at Kurama in her human form. So, you're the true form of the Nine Tails? But I can't allow you to manipulate my son we need him. His survival will be beneficial for our future plans. Minato explained before turning back to Naruto who was now starting to see red. Who are you exactly what have you done with my son? Minato yelled at Naruto. How dare you, Minato was taken back by Naruto's words. What do you mean how dare I? Stop beating around the bush and tell me where is my son, Minato ordered. Naruto's eyes were now glowing with power as he grabbed Minato by the front of his vest lifting him off his feet. Your son is dead, do you hear me? When I was cast into this world, I entered the body of my counterpart, and due to how immense my power is, it eradicated both his mind and soul. I'm your son from a different world whether you want to believe it or not. And whatever you have planned, I will put an end to it. Naruto declared before wrapping his arm tightly around Minato's neck and with a quick motion he broke his counterpart's father's neck. Naruto stared down emotionlessly as the body of his father dissipated into light particles. He then proceeded to rip off the seal tag keeping Kurama confined in the cage, then placing his hand on his stomach before he turned his hand counterclockwise unlocking the cage. This should make things a little bit more bearable until tomorrow Kurama. Naruto said softly before turning around he began to walk away. Kurama watched Naruto's retreating form as it vanished from sight, she felt her heart skip a beat as her cheeks began to heat up. See you tomorrow. Naruto. Dot kun. 
Kurama said as her face turned the same color as her hair. Naruto woke up pretty early in the morning, much earlier than he used to. He went about his normal daily routine such as eating, bathing and getting dressed as he had an appointment with Hiruzen. Of course, the secretary gave him a hard time, but Hiruzen hearing the commotion came out and scolded his secretary before allowing Naruto to enter his office. So how are you doing this morning Naruto-kun? You seem a bit better than you were last night. Hiruzen asked as Naruto nodded giving his surrogate grandfather a small smile. I guess you could say that Gigi. I had quite the day yesterday and it took its toll on me. Naruto said thinking about the fourth great ninja war rather than the Mizuki incident. Hiruzen noticed the pain edged onto Naruto's face it was there for a split second but long enough for him to take notice of. What are you hiding Naruto? Perhaps Jiraiya was right he is hiding something. Well, it's now or never I might as well ask him. Hiruzen thought to himself before clearing his throat gaining Naruto's attention. All right Naruto I know you're hiding something you can tell me? Hiruzen asked with slightly narrowed eyes despite the smile he was wearing. Naruto for his part was taken by surprise for a moment before he remembered who he was sitting in front of. This was Hiruzen Serutobi, the third Hokage, the professor, and god of shinobi. Hiruzen was hailed as one of the strongest shinobi of all time. Of course, he was nothing in comparison to Kagaya, Hagoromo, Hamura, Madara or Hashirama. But in Naruto's opinion, he was probably the strongest shinobi who didn't have any bullshit power-ups or overpowered hacks. You've got to give the old monkey props for being able to tell that you're hiding something. Kurama's powerful but gentle feminine voice called out from deep within his mind. I knew he was going to find out eventually I just didn't think it would be this early. I need to be careful. Naruto began before Kurama cut him off. Careful? Kurama said incredibly. Why would you need to be careful you have enough power to destroy the world ten times over, easily with your power? Kurama replied obviously not getting the point why Naruto wanted to hide his powers in the first place. Because I want to keep the timeline as similar to mine as possible without changing too much. I really have no idea what kind of changes have already transpired from me arriving in this world. Naruto retorted as Kurama snorted in amusement. Funny. You simply being here has already thrown this world off balance. Whatever original timeline that was gonna happen in this world has already been driven off course. Why stop now, why not create your own timeline your own future and stop worrying about the past? I can guarantee you that you are the most powerful being alive on this planet right now. Kurama explained in a tone filled with mirth. Naruto didn't reply instead he stared at his surrogate grandfather before giving a deep sigh. While he could use his Sharingan or Rinne's Sharingan to simply erase or alter Hiruzen's memories. Instead, he ultimately decided to tell him the truth minus everything about Kurama because his father was alive and if Hiruzen was aware of it, the last thing he needed was putting Kurama in more danger than she already was. Gigi. Ah, oh, yes Naruto-kun. I need you to ask the Anbu to leave the room, because what I have to tell you is not going to be easy for you to accept or understand. And the fewer people that know about this the better, this is a beyond SSS rank secret. Naruto said with the utmost seriousness which caused Hiruzen to stare at the young looking Uzumaki with a bit of confusion and concern. With a single gesture of his hand, all of the hidden Anbu in the room left with the exception of one. Narrowing his eyes Naruto opened his hand as his chakra began to gather and manifest in the shape of a shard or crystal. Naruto threw the chakra based weapon in the direction of the one remaining Anbu. The sound of piercing flesh, a groan, and a thump was heard. Hiruzen was appalled and somewhat impressed by Naruto's actions although he was curious about the chakra based weapon he had never seen anything like that before. Naruto what was that and why did you attack one of my anbu? Hiruzen asked as Naruto glanced at the old cage before walking over to the corpse and rolling the body over revealing a nay the symbol for root on the mask. Hiruzen narrowed his eyes before he gritted his teeth slightly. Damn you Danzo. Hiruzen cursed his former rival and friend for not disbanding his root program. Danzo needs to be dealt with immediately, if left alone he will cause more and more problems. He's also partially responsible for your death. Naruto said before his eyes widened realizing what he just said. Hearing this caused Hiruzen to stare at Naruto with narrowed eyes, did he just hear Naruto correctly? Danzo though was partially responsible for his death? Sure, he may have been close to 70 years old, but he still had quite a bit of life left in him. Naruto what do you mean, by, my death? Are you trying to tell me that you're getting visions of the future? 
or perhaps you are a time traveler? Because I find that very unlikely, as something like that is impossible. Hiruzen explained as Naruto rubbed his forehead before deciding to undo his current form and show Hiruzen his true form. I guess there's no point in hiding any longer. I might as well tell you the complete truth. I came from the future just as you said. Naruto paused as Hiruzen glared at him which Naruto ignored before continuing. You are right about one thing time travel is impossible, without the aid of divine intervention. I was visited by the sage of six paths his brother the white-eyed god and their mother the rabid goddess. Hiruzen's eyes widened in shock before he narrowed them once again. You lie. There is no way they would. Hiruzen's words died in his throat as Naruto's form was engulfed in bright light and what took Naruto's place was his true form Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki a half-human half-celestial being hybrid. From Naruto's horns, snow-white spiky hair, his Rinnegan, and Tensigen, as well as his Rinne Sharingan and overwhelming chakra, made it apparent that he wasn't lying. Do you believe me now? Naruto asked calmly as Hiruzen dumbly nodded unable to form any words. Naruto stood in front of the large Uzumaki shrine, sure it was a little rough around the edges, but nothing a little manual labor couldn't fix. Are you sure it was wise to tell that old monkey just about everything? Kurama's voice echoed throughout Naruto's psyche. I didn't tell him everything. I only told him the things he needed to know. I didn't tell him about the celestial goddess, nor did I tell him about you or Makai or the history of your mother and this world's version of the Sage of Six Paths. Naruto retorted as he heard Kurama growled softly. Anyways, I think it's about time I head in and get to work on releasing you and restoring your chakra. Naruto said softly while entering the shrine before placing his hand on the wall as a curse seal spread across the entire room completely sealing it off making it impossible for anyone to enter without Naruto's permission. Naruto sat down in the lotus position, before undoing his current form assuming his true form before placing his hand on his stomach where his seal was located, channeling his six paths chakra into his hand. From his hand down to his forearm began to glow in ethereal whitish blue. His now glowing hand sunk into his stomach before he began to pull back a large congealed blob of red energy, gently placing the orb of dense red energy in front of him it took the shape of Kurama. Kurama blinked once then twice before she realized she was truly outside of the seal. She then took notice that Naruto also abolished the seal on him. She went to take a step only for her legs to give out on her as she fell forward. She was expecting to hit the ground however what she landed against was warm and dense but not hard. Opening her eyes her face was laying against Naruto's chest as he caught her before she hit the ground. It seems being sealed for so long hasn't done any good to your muscles, Naruto said while staring at Kurama's face. I don't need your sympathy Naruto, it won't take long for my muscles to restore. Can we get on to restoring my chakra, the sooner I can leave this realm the better. Kurama commanded with a deep red blush on her cheeks as Naruto couldn't help but smirk at her. This caused her left eye to twitch as she resisted the urge to smack him. Alright alright calm down Kurama-chan, Naruto said with a smirk as Kurama twitched at the prefix added at the end of her name. So how do you want to do this restoring your chakra that is? Because I'm going to have to filter out the six paths power from my chakra. Naruto began before Kurama cut him off. You don't have to filter out anything just give me your chakra, please. This caused Naruto to frown as six paths chakra was much stronger than tailed beast chakra by leaps and bounds. Wrapping his arms tightly around Kurama he began to allow his chakra to flow into her body freely heading towards her chakra coils. He heard Kurama release a moan, as he could clearly feel her body trembling at the immense power flowing through her. Kurama are you alright? He asked with a slightly concerned tone as he could feel her body heating up. I, I'm, oh, okay, okay, I'm okay. Kurama muttered out as she began panting. Naruto begrudgingly continued slowly flowing his chakra into her, as he could tell she was going to reach her limit soon of how much chakra she could possess. And it was best to stop before that happened so Naruto released Kurama, as he stopped the flow of his chakra, which in turn gained him a groan of disapproval from the crimson haired vixen sitting on his lap. Why did you stop? She whined cutely. Because I don't want to hurt you. Six paths chakra is very dangerous to those who can't withstand its power, it can literally rip your body and soul apart if you're not strong enough. And while you are deftly powerful, I didn't want to overdo it, so your chakra reserves are probably at 80 to 85% full. 
Naruto said before he paused for a moment before noticing that Kurama's skin tone was brighter and more vibrant than it was before and her hair was much shinier and silkier, as was her fur. Kurama wasn't used to humans showing concern for her well-being, while in Naruto's case a half-breed. Um. I feel fine better than I ever have. Thank you. She said softly before she gave a small yawn showing off her long canines. She then snuggled up to Naruto as she closed her eyes. I think I'm going to take a little nap. She said in a lazy tone which caused Naruto's eyes to widen. Wait what? Naruto all but yelled as he helplessly watched the princess of Makai use him as a body pillow as she gave off a soft purr. Naruto couldn't help but stare at her with a look of awe as he had to resist the urge to pet her and rub her ears. She looked absolutely adorable. Releasing a sigh of defeat Naruto grabbed a hold of her before standing up and making his way towards one of the many rooms hoping to find a bed or a futon at the very least. Because there was no way he was going to lay on the floor if he didn't have to. Hiruzen sat behind his desk with a troubled look on his face. Everything Naruto had just told him it just couldn't be real, and yet for some reason, he couldn't help but believe the young Uzumaki well rather Otsutsuki now. If word got out about Naruto's power, war would break out without a doubt, all the other nations would fight to the bitter end in an attempt to obtain his power or gain him as their personal weapon. You seem troubled Gigi, Jiraiya asked as he brought Hiruzen a bottle of sake and several new Ika Ika novels. I wish I could tell you about it Jiraiya-kun. Hiruzen paused before grabbing the bottle of sake as he took a swig from it. But I swore on my position as Hokage that I wouldn't speak a word to anyone. You'll have to talk to your godson Naruto if you want to know. But I warn you what he will tell you will turn your world upside down. Hiruzen said while rubbing his forehead still trying to come to grips with everything Naruto had told him. It wasn't the fact that Hiruzen got killed by his former student Orochimaru that didn't bother him nor was it about the Akatsuki or Sasuke becoming a bloodthirsty murderer. What bothered him was the fact that Madara was behind everything manipulating everyone from the shadows, he survived his battle with Hashirama and obtained the Rinnegan and later implanted it into Nagato Jiraiya's former pupil. And the fact that he was trying to resurrect the Ten Tails to become a god and rule over the world while everyone was trapped in an infinite genjutsu. That's what was bothering Hiruzen and it's not like he could call a five-cage summit to discuss this with the other cage. Right now, Naruto is the only person alive capable of stopping this from happening. Hiruzen thought as he gave a humorless chuckle which caught Jiraiya's attention. Oi, Gigi, is everything all right? Jiraiya asked becoming more and more concerned about his former sensei. I don't believe I am. Perhaps I should take the rest of the day off and just let my mind rest. Hiruzen said before standing up from behind his desk taking the bottle of sake and the two adult novels with him. But I have information on the Akatsuki from Itachi, Jiraiya said only to be waved off by Hiruzen who gave Jiraiya a small bittersweet smile. That won't be necessary I believe I have an even better source, have a good day Jiraiya, Hiruzen said before leaving Jiraiya alone in the Hokage's office. A better source? How? Jiraiya thought aloud as he was getting the suspicion that he and his godson would be having a long talk very soon. But first things first some research then his godson. Or maybe he should seek out his godson first then some research? The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.